Okay, hello everybody. Um, very brief intro, this is me, um, I'm Gary. I'm currently working for a company called LockU in London and one of the brands that um, LockU has is Open Cage Data. We're one of the sponsors of State of the Map here. Um, for those of you who know me, hello everyone, it's nice to see you again. Um, for those of you that don't, um, previous corporate existences I've had um, was leading the um, geotechnologies team for Yahoo out of London and also, um, first of all, working for Ovi Maps when Nokia still called them Ovi, which then became Nokia Maps, which then became Here Maps. Um, now, most of the people in this room, I, I hope, understand that in, in today's geospatially driven world, as Sarah pointed out, a geocoder is critical. Um, unfortunately, most of the people outside of this room, and especially most of the people outside this industry, don't. They think this is dead simple and really easy, and why the hell can't we get it right? They expect the stuff that they find on the interwebs, on their mobile phones, and on their tablets to just work, and for these black screens to magically divine what it is that they type or tap or swipe into it, even if what they put in is absolute garbage. Um, I think it's worth noting why people need to do this. And there's lots of reasons. They, they might have data with geospatial context, but they have no coordinates. Or they have data where coordinates are there, but they're really, really questionable. Null Island, anyone? They might want to show their data on a map or store the coordinates that they get back from a geocoder in a database. Do more than just cache them. They might have coordinates, but have no idea where these coordinates actually refer to. They might want to cluster their data into whatever geographical groupings make sense to them, maybe by neighborhood, by town, by city, by country, and lots of other th reasons. They want to know where they are. They want to do lots of stuff with, with geographic data. All of this and more needs a geocoder that works, that works well, and probably works globally. But enough about the general reason why people want to geocode. I want to talk about why we need to geocode. And by we, I mean, I mean Locku, the, the company behind OpenCage. We need a geocoder because one of the other things that Locku does is a thing called Nestoria. It gets real estate listings. That means details of properties for sale or for rent with hopefully a valid address attached to them. That data needs to be verified, cleansed, sanitized, shown on a map, either precisely or in the general area if we can't get a precise street level match. Now, Nestoria has been doing this for over eight years, geocoding and indexing up to 10 million properties each and every day. That's a lot of geocoding to do. And it needs to happen in areas of the world which aren't always well served by the commercial geocoders that the proprietary map providers have to offer. Because remember, their key market is turn-by-turn -turn navigation either on phones, PNDs, or in cars. And if they're in an area which doesn't support an economy, which happens to um, make those proprietary providers interested in it, then the data coverage you're gonna get is little or none. Now, you'd be quite forgiven for saying, ah, that's screenshots for Karlsruhe. That's not difficult, come on. Germany's really well mapped. It's got a sane addressing system. Hell, it's actually got an addressing system. And you'd be right. But we also do this for countries like India, which aren't as well mapped and which also have a much more fluid approach to addressing. Um, in January of this year, um, we were in India and we asked some people in Bangalore what they would do if they wanted to geocode a batch of a thousand or so addresses. Nothing particularly staggering. And the answer we got was simple. Geocode that many addresses? We wouldn't. We can't. And there's this long running joke that we found in India that um, people have GPS in India. It doesn't stand for global positioning system. It stands for general populace system. You look at an address, you work out roughly where it is, you go to as near as you can get, and then you stop and you ask someone. And they'll go, oh, no, no, you want to go down there. And so you go down there, and then you stop and you ask someone, and you repeat, and eventually you get to where you want to be. Yet. We're geocoding in Bangalore and in India to the best of our ability to do so. Now, when it comes to choosing a geocoder, there's a lot of choices you have to make. It's got to be the right choice. And this is just a small selection of the um, services which are on offer. And apologies to anybody who's got a geocoding service and it's, it's not a, a, up here. There's strengths and weaknesses 
for all of these. You have to make a commercial versus non-commercial, an open versus closed, a, a licensing view. You have to look at whether or not the service asserts ownership over your data, whether it allows you to put your data um, together with their geocodes. Are you creating a derived work? It's an absolute legal minefield. And at Nestoria, we had to make a decision, and that's the reason I'm here now. We decided to build our own. Uh, or to be pr more precise, we decided to build our own geocoders, plural, for each of the countries that Nestoria operates in. And this, is, this was a hard decision for the company to make, but it was definitely a right one. No geocoding service that was around that we looked at offered the right combination of coverage, depth, usage rights, and all the other factors. So that's what we did. We did it with open data, we did it with OSM, we did it with Yahoo GeoPlanet and other data sources. And these geocoders are running right now, 24 by 7, geocoding property listings. Now, when I joined the company in, in January, I took a long, hard look at all of the technology that was making this work. And just like in Despicable Me, I had a light bulb moment. We should launch a geocoder. And not just a geocoder that works just in the countries that Nestoria work in, but a geocoder that works globally. Now, for most people, geocoding and OSM means nominatim. There's other geocoding services, including MacQuest's open version of, of nominatim. There's geocodio, there's geo.io, there's photon, to name but a few. All of these are standalone services. It's one geocoder behind a single API. There should be more than one. And when you look at what's behind the API for these large proprietary geocoders, there's more than one geocoder. There's, this is certainly true of the, the companies that I've worked for and the geocoders I've worked on. There's different geocoders for different countries, for different languages, for different queries. That's not an easy task to achieve, and that's probably the reason why commercial geocoders cost such a damn large amount of money. But at the moment, the commercial providers, they're battling it out amongst themselves. Google's fighting Navtech, is fighting TomTom, is fighting Apple. And whilst they've grudgingly admitted that OSM could now be their equal where the map is concerned, the same can't be said for their view of geocoding. They're ignoring us. This means there is a gap in the market. And this is the one that OpenCage we're trying to exploit, and which we hope the OSM community as a whole will help exploit. So we took the Nestoria geocoders. We added in our own instance of nominatum, not a hosted instance, our own instance of DSTK, of two fishes. And we've wrapped all of this into a single API, doing just what the proprietary players do. A single point, which you shoot queries at, we then farm them off to the different APIs. We geocode all of them. We rank them for relevance. And we try and give you the best possible answer we can. Um, this is just the start. We plan on adding as more as we, as we can get our hands on. And if you've got a geocoder that you know of that you think should be in here, tell us. Um, as well as myself, there's, um, there's Ed Freifogel, um, one of the founders of, of Locku, uh, as well as Mark Tobias Metten down here, who's our t um, resident tame technical expert. It's called the Open Cage Geocoder. You'll find it online at this URL, and it's there right now. Just as the power of Leaflet's JavaScript maps APIs is simplicity and ease of use, we hope that you'll find that is exactly the same case here. It's not just for the US or for Europe. Reverse geocoding is just as important as forward, as, as forward geocoding, and indeed with the ever-growing rise of smartphones which want to know where, where you are, it's probably just as important. And at the moment, it's free. There will be tiered pricing levels. When we introduce those, we will let you know and we will be utterly clear and transparent. But above all, there will always be a free tier to this. Um, I used to have a, um, a law which said never work with children, animals, and um, live demos. Um, but I'm going to very briefly show you what we've got. And if it all goes horribly wrong, don't blame me. So. Aha, you see, it's all gone horribly wrong. I need to turn display mirroring on. Very quickly. Here we go. Can you see me anywhere? No. See? My, my law has been absolutely adhered to. Let's try that. Yeah, that's a bit better. So. 
We have, we, have an, we have API documentation, which is human readable. We have frequently asked questions. We've even provided um, plugins and libraries for you to use the geocoder through Perl, through Python, through um, PHP, through Ruby, as well as a plugin for Leaflet so that you can add the geocoder straight into your map. And in addition to all of that, because this is, um, this is a RESTful interface, you can do things like this. So you can plug the geocoding request straight into, into your browser. We support um, HTTP as well as HTTPS, so it's nice and secure. You want JSON? We'll give you JSON. If XML is more your thing, then um, we can do XML. We, we can even use the same response and request format that um, a certain well-known geocoding API from uh, Mountain View, California uses to allow you to migrate as easily as you possibly can. And if you want to know what your geocode looks like, there's also an, uh, a map output format which will neatly spit out the results of your geocoding query so that you can see what you're doing. Hopefully, it's all very simple and very easy. So, if you'd like to sign up, sign up is now, is now available. If you've got a problem, you want help, you have suggestions, you want to tell us we're doing an incredibly good job, you want to tell us that we're doing an incredibly bad job and you know how to fix it, then please talk to us. Um, thanks very much. Okay, thank you, Gary. Any questions? Okay. <laughs> Um, so, uh, are you doing any auto suge suggestion or fuzzy search uh, thing, or uh, is it like uh, the user has to put all the data and uh, hits return, and you just uh, return one set of data, or is it you can put like uh, K A R L S and it will show up cards rule? At the moment, we're not doing um, auto complete or, or auto suggest. No, um, but okay. you do not have to put fully qualified. Um, addresses in, into the system. It will try and do its best to work out what it is you mean and will give you um, a relevant answer. And uh, if I mistype? If uh, I like uh, uh, write uh, Carl's rule with H instead of R or something like that? Yep, um, com common misspellings are, are detected and, and are corrected. So, you know, Lodnon rather than London, for example. Do you evaluate your quality against the Google Maps geocoder? And if yes, uh, is there a page where I can take a look? How do you compare? Sorry, could, could, you, could you say that again? Do you evaluate your quality and do you compare it with the geocoder from Google? Do I believe in the quality? I believe the quality. Do you evaluate? Uh, do you measure quality? No, no, we, we don't. Um, for, for one simple reason. We've been working flat out trying to get this out the door. Um, you, have to, you have to remember that the data that an open geocoder works on is predominantly open street map. It is as good as, as the data is there. Um, unlike Google, unlike Navtech, we don't have thousands of employees and um, LiDAR streetcars driving all, all the time. Um, I think as far as this is concerned, if you want to run a turn-by-turn -turn navigation service off of this, then um, that's a costly endeavor and that will, co that will cost you. But for everything else, I I'll go back to Mookie Hackley's seminal comment on OpenStreetMap many years ago when he said, it, it's good enough. And for, our, for the purposes that we've been testing it under and indeed to drive um, a growing, thriving online business for Nestoria, it's definitely good enough. Openaddresses.io is a brilliant idea. Are you using it? And if not, are you going to use it? Yes, we will use it. Yes, we will use it. Um, th th that definitely falls under the, um, the bucket fund of other services which we know of and that we want to put in. 
So you spoke about ranking the results from different from the different geocoders that you um, rely on. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the ranking criteria? What do you, how do you do that? So um, if if you look at every single one of those geocoding um, backend APIs I talked about. Um, they exhibit the same approach to, um, to confidence and to ranking as um, there is to software standards. As, as Grace Hopper once said, the wonderful thing about standards is there's so many of them to choose from. And the wonderful thing about geocoders is every single geocoder has got its own idea of, um, of what ranking and confidence means. Um, in a lot of cases, it's a number between one or 10, but they don't tell you what zero means. They don't tell you what 10 is, or you can probably get a good idea. But all of those other points in between, it's it's a little bit like that. So um, the way in which we look at this is um, is if there are polygons available, we, we look at uh, um, basically concentric polygons to see what fits inside each other. Otherwise, we're, we're looking at, um, at bounding boxes. We're looking at um, which geocoder from the return data gives the best possible and the most accurate result. And that's the result that we give. And then And then we use that over the entirety of the return result set to rank it. So the, the most accurate result will be will be the first result, and the ones which we are less confident about will be later on in the results returned. Okay, final question. Uh, so I noticed in the uh, examples that you gave, you have uh, this thanks and we're hiring in the JSON response, but not in the XML response. What's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> so um, bonus points for actually um, in inspecting the return payload from the API whilst talking, Matt. Nice. I'm very, very impressed. Um, I think you found a bug, which obviously we will fix, won't you, Mark? Yeah. <laughs> OK, thank you very much.